Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 3 on how to create a simple online game uh, with ct.js and the camera. Now in the last episode we got player movement working, uh, people connecting to each other's games, um, but we discovered one problem which was collisions. Uh, collisions don't work as you can see here when I move uh, my player on the right hand side, I move the box, but on the left hand side, it just looks like I'm going through it. Uh, and now the second problem that we discovered is that animations don't work. Uh, so when I move left and right, this play on the left hand screen just looks really boring and static. So in this episode, we're going to go and fix these issues. Let's get started. Now we're going to start off with just fixing the box collision as that is relatively simple. Uh, if we just go to types and see how this box actually works out the collision, we get to see this code on step where the box is uh, that is checking if it's meeting with this play object or player type. So if we just copy and paste this and rename this to other type, sorry, we rename this to other player uh, as that is what our uh, other type is called. And now we should be able to see the collision happening on both of our host and client. So let's copy the ID, let's join our game. Let's refresh this actually first. Let's join our game. Cool, now let's get our characters where the box is. Okay, so here we go, let's try it. And there you go, the box now moves on the host and also on the client as well. Uh, pretty simple fix. But now we have the animation. Now the animation is going to be quite similar in terms of how we're going to fix it, but requires a couple of more steps on how to actually get it working. Um, let's first check out how the animation gets played on the player type. Um, so let's go back to our types. Let's go to player and we go to on step and we get to see here that it calculates every single time I'm pressing my left arrow key or the right arrow key. Uh, it's going to do some calculations and it's going to also play these keyframes. And now these keyframes come from the textures that we have. So if we go to textures player, we can see all these keyframes that the game is using to animate our player, uh, like down here. Um, and basically here we're defining which keyframes to play and whether we should stop it or play them or whatever we want to do with the animation. So how do we get this on our other player type? Uh, as you can see here, that we actually use the ctActions.move value. Now this ct.actions.move value comes from, if we go to our projects, actions and inputs, here. So we define move, and these are all the keys we press on our keyboard, defining what the value is for move. Now of course, we don't have this on our client. Our client is only sending in the x and the y positions of the current player. So technically we can calculate the animations depending on the X and Y value. However, we're gonna keep it simple as always uh, and just use the existing code provided for us um, with the CT actions move value to get it working. That means we need to send the move value data also to our host every single time we're moving. So let's go do that. Let's go to our types. Let's go all the way down where we did this, uh, where we're sending the data from last episode. And let's just call this uh, move value. And we can do ct actions dot move dot, uh, what was it, dot value. Okay. And we're actually going to do the same for the jumping value as well. So here on line 41, you can see ct actions dot jump dot down. And it's doing something every time it detects that the player or the person is holding down the up arrow key or W or space or whatever. So let's copy and paste this all the way down here. Let's give it a jump value and give it that. Great, so now we're gonna be sending the X, the Y, the move value and the jump value. Um, if we say this and we go back to our multiplayer code, we're going to do something with these values. And the way we're going to do that is by, like I said, keeping it simple and just reusing the code already in the player. So if we scroll to the top, we're going to copy and paste this. We'll also copy and paste on ground as we'll need it later. 
copy and paste this into our other player. However, we're gonna paste it in on create, not on step. And I'll tell you why now. <laughs> we're putting it on create because we're actually gonna make a function and we're gonna call this function something like play animation, play animation, where the capital A. And we're gonna put everything inside here, inside this animation. Uh, inside this function, sorry. And this function is gonna take in the move value that we are gonna give it. And this move value basically replaces those, this ct.actions value here. Okay, so now we have made this function called play animation. We are giving it the move value and we're expecting it to do exactly what it's doing on the player type, but to do it on the other player type as well. Um, you, know, you might have noticed that we're missing some variables though. Here we have max speed, acceleration. Where, where are these coming from? Well, we are just gonna go back to player. We're gonna go to on create and we're just gonna copy everything here. Uh, we don't need the camera stuff because we don't want the camera to be following our player. Copy this for now and paste it here as well. Okay, so now we need to call this function. And the way we can call this function is, is if we go back to our project, if we go to custom scripts, multiplayer, and here we call connected players, user ID, play animation. And we can give it the player.data.newValue. Awesome. And now the reason why this works, the reason why we can call play animation to on this type is because we use the this dot play animation. And basically what this dot play animation is, it's basically saying create this variable um, called play animation and assign it to this type, to this object. And you can basically access this variable anywhere you want in the code uh, or anywhere you have the player object available. And we're basically saying hey, this variable is actually gonna be a function. This function is gonna take this move value variable and it's gonna do uh, the things that we say uh, it should do. <laughs> so in our case, we are just telling it to do this. Uh, so if we go back to our project um, and now if we just save it, it should play our animation. Cool, so I'm gonna create a match, join it. And there you go. Our character now is animated on the left-hand screen. However, we can instantly notice that when I'm going left, it's still facing right, which is not really the, the, the correct thing uh, to do. Um, so let's figure out how on the player side that is happening. So if we go to our types, if we click on player, go and draw, we get to see that the scale actually gets changed depending on the position it's going. So whenever it's going left, uh, it's gonna flip the image. So the character will look that way. Whenever it's going that way, it's gonna keep the image as it is and it's gonna be looking that way. Um, so we can just copy and paste this code into our other player on draw. Click done, see what happens when we launch it. Cool, so now we joined, we move our player. Our player is going to the right. And now if you go to the left, our player looks to the left. Perfect. So we got that working, but now there's only one thing left, jumping. As you can see, on the right hand side, it is not doing anything. The way we can fix that is just doing the same thing as we did before with the left and right. Let's see how jumping works on the player. Uh, so if we go to types, we go to our player, go on step and scroll down and here we see dash dash jumping. So it says every time the a, a key that represents jump is pressed down, uh, check that it's on the ground and play the animation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this, we're gonna copy this jump function. We're gonna go back to our other player and scroll to the bottom and just paste it here. Uh, however, of course, we're not done yet. We want to create a function uh, called jumping and place that in it. So we can call it every time we need to jump a client. Uh, so we can do this dot jump and assign it to a arrow function. There you go. 
copy paste this here. And because we want to replace this, we can just type in here, jump value, rename that to this. And now we have our jump function. So if we go back to our project, uh, we add a new line, we do connect to players, and uh, we do user ID, dot jump, and we give it the player data dot jump value. We save that, launch it, and it should work. But it's not working. <laughs> why isn't it working? Okay, let's figure out why it's not working. So the reason why this isn't working is because it's using this on ground variable. Now if we go scroll all the way to the top where we covered and pasted this, uh, we, we call on ground when we create the other player. Um, and it's actually being used uh, everywhere in our code. Uh, and you might have noticed that on the other type, the main player type, this on ground actually gets called on the on step section, which means it gets updated on every single step. But if we cut this and paste it here, it's gonna complain that it doesn't know what we're talking about when we're referencing on ground. So how we can fix this is by instead of making a local variable, we create a global variable called this dot on ground. And this is the same principle with how the functions work Basically, you have the object with the type in it, and uh, you can reference all of its variables and properties by the this.x, or whatever you want to call it, uh, whatever variable name you want to call it. And now here on step, we're saying, create a new variable on this object called on ground and assign this code to it here. And because we're doing this on every step, it's gonna get updated on every single step. And we can now easily reference uh, this here by just typing in this dot on ground, this dot on ground, this dot on ground, and this dot on ground. So if we save it and we launch it here, we create a new match, copy paste the ID. And now, there you go. Our animation plays exactly how it plays on the client side and it works also on the host as well so there you go now we have collisions working animations working uh everything that we need to get a simple game up and up and running however you might have noticed that our code isn't actually optimized it's not very clear what it's doing like we're not using this gravity variable anywhere uh, we're doing these calculations where we might not need to do these calculations so we'll get to that in a later episode of cleaning our code and actually optimizing it to work a little more smoother. But for now, it works. Uh, and I will see you in the next episode on syncing these enemies so uh, it's shared on both the client side and the host side and we can see them exactly where they are at the same time. And also we're gonna be talking about uh, death and respawning. <laughs> uh, what, a, what a lovely subject, death. <laughs> uh, so, how that's going to work, how responding will work, uh, and so on and so on. So, I'll catch you next episode, and thank you for watching.